Hey everyone, last video we talked about some of the variables that you might come across in Unity, but one that we left out was actually a really important variable and I wanted to make a separate video because you really can only do cool things when you um, put a lot of effort into this variable. It's called a bool, and a bool essentially is true or false. That's essentially what a bool is. So it has two uh, states. You can either be true or you can be false. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this bool to make a game object like this cube change between colors depending on whether it's true or false. Where if it's true, it'll maintain one color. And if it's false, it will have the other. Uh, I think I got that backwards, but we'll find out. Anyway, so um, up at the top, I've done a few things. I've created some variables, and the one that we're focusing on right now is the bool, red or blue. It's been named appropriately because this bool is going to decide if the object is red or if the object is blue. So those are our two states, red and blue. Now red is determined by the material on the object. So we're going to make a red material. You can create a material right over here. Click on that button, click material, and then turn it red. So all you have to do is go to the albedo box and drag it to the color that you want. Here's uh, a bar. You can use the RGBA values, however you prefer. So I made a red material. I also made a blue material in the same way. Then what I wanted to do was I uh, created those variables for the materials and I made them public. And by making them public, I can go into Unity, drag my red or blue script onto a cube, okay? And then it'll pop up right over here. There's a spot where I can bring my material in by dragging and dropping or I can click on this circle off to the side and locate my material. So I'm going to choose red and blue. Make sure that they match up with the name just so that you know you have consistency in your code. Okay, my game object, just like before, is going to be this cube, and I'll use the line this cube equals game object to get the object the script is attached to. I need to create a renderer because the renderer is what holds the material. So the renderer is a component of the game object. I'll call the renderer rend for short. In the start, I've said rend equals this cube dot game object dot get component renderer. That's a mouthful. So let's break it down. This cube, as we said over here, is the game object, and we declared its value. It's the game object the script is attached to. So that value has been set. That means we can use it now. So rend equals this cube. What we want from this cube is the component that's the renderer. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the more general level of the game object. Move into the component, the renderer. Because rend is a renderer. So it needs to have a value that's a renderer type. Now that I've saved the renderer from my cube, I can freely access it and change anything within the renderer, like the materials. All right, so all of this is about the bool. Trust me. Now that we can access the materials on the renderer, we can do what's called a conditional statement. A conditional statement will activate if a condition is met, and we're going to put that into the update so that it doesn't happen every single frame. The condition will be if the user presses spacebar. So the way you can write that condition is if, and then in parentheses, this is one of those weird lines that does not end in a semicolon. In parentheses, you're going to put input because the user will be pressing a key, get key down, which means it only takes this input on the downstroke of pressing the key, and uh, key code dot space that tells you which key they're pressing. Inside my condition, which has to be put in brackets, I mean, I guess if it's just one line, you don't need a bracket, uh, braces, sorry, it has to be put in braces. If you're just going to write one line, you don't need the braces, but I like to do it anyway just for consistency because when I write more lines, um, you do need the braces. So inside the braces, I'm going to put red or blue equals. And this right here looks kind of funny. The exclamation point in programming is not. So red or blue equals not red or blue. What that means is if red or blue is true, then I'm now setting the value to not true, which would be the equivalent of false. If red or blue is false, I'm setting the value to not false, which would be the equivalent of true. So that when the user presses space, whatever this bool was before, it is now switched. So I'm giving myself a way to switch the value of the bool through an input. The next thing I do is I take that uh, value of the bool and I put it into another condition. So if red or blue 
is actually true. And when you check the condition of a variable and you're looking for a value, you have to put two equals because we're not setting it, we're actually just reading it. We're getting the value. So if it is true, then I want my ren, remember that's the renderer component of the game object, I want its material to be red. So red means true. And if red or blue is not true, that would be the else, then I want my material to be blue. So very simple script, uh, even though it looks a little bit complex, it, all it does is if you press space, it'll change a bool. Depending on what the bool is, it'll change a material. This happens every frame. If I wanted to, I could even just take all of this, copy it, paste it right there, delete it from the outside, and that way it would only happen on those frames where I pressed space. Probably save the computer a little bit of power, so you know what, let's just leave it right there. We'll go into Unity, verify that our red and blue have been assigned, hit play. Notice how my cube will now have um, its white color, but as soon as I hit space, it has taken on the true uh, color from the bool, the bool true color. And the bool is a checkbox right here with a check in it. If I hit space again, it's now turned blue. Hit space again. Can you guys hear that? That's the beautiful sound of a script working. All right, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.